My name is Marvin Anderson. Um, I was born and raised in Hanover, Virginia. On July 14, 1982, I was arrested for uh, two counts of rape, sodomy, robbery, and induction of a Caucasian female. Uh, this summer of 82, I was sent, went to trial and was found guilty and was sentenced to a total of 210 years for two counts of rape, sodomy, robbery, and induction. Um, crime I didn't commit. The day that I was found guilty, I mean, of course, you know, I, I turned around to look at my family who was in court with me and I couldn't see them. I mean, everything was black. Although they was less than 10 feet from, away from me, I couldn't see them. It's like you fall into a, a black hole and you can't climb, pull your way out. I was angry. Um, of course, we're all going to be angry because we don't really understand what it has just happened to us. Um, you know you didn't commit a crime, but yet your life is in the hands of 12 people and a judge who just said, you did this crime, you don't know having where to go. I was mad, more or less, at our system, um, people that I trusted, um, not knowing anything about the law, but knowing that as a child you are told to trust these people. And that's the way I was raised, to believe and trust in our police officers, fire officers, or people of the law. You believe and trust them. They are there to help you. Well, what I was taught has just failed me. Over the years, you learn how to turn on your emotions and turn them off. Um, you learn how to control your emotions. And in order to to better myself and to stay focused, I chose not to be angry. You know, anger only does one thing to you, and that's eat at you and eat away from you. It takes everything from you. If you spend that much energy in being angry at something or someone, you have no energy to fight. In 2000, uh, I received a phone call from Mr. Peter Newfair, who is from the New York Innocent Project Network. Um, one of the co-founders, and he informed me that he had some good news and some bad news. We have a type of relationship where I said, Peter, you know, okay, give me the bad news first. And he said, well, I'm going to give you the good news first. He said, uh, we ran tests on DNA, and you have been excluded from everything. So I'm like, okay, so what's the bad news? He said, well, the bad news is that the attorney general has put a halt on your testing. And when he called me and we talked over the phone, I was on Interstate 95 um, driving a tractor trailer. And when he told me that I had been excluded from all evidence of being the attacker, you know, I said, Mr. Newfell, I said, you know, I don't mean to be rude, but I'm driving a tractor trailer, 18-wheeler, on northbound 95 during rush hour traffic. Is there any way I could call you back? Um, he said, sure, you know, give me time, get home. And the whole time I'm driving this truck, uh, I'm looking down at the, the vehicles that's passing me, and I'm going to myself, wow. All of these years of fighting, we found it, have the evidence to prove my innocence. When there was a time that no one wanted to listen to me, no one believed me, and now I can prove my innocence. So um, I pulled over the side of the road, got out of the truck, and actually walked maybe 25 yards ahead of the truck and turned around and looked at the traffic, looked at the truck, and said, I am a free man. Society believes that once a person goes to court, he is found guilty that he actually committed a crime. That is not the case. Not everyone that is incarcerated committed a crime. And until society believes and accept the fact that we're only human, we make mistakes. There are innocent people that's in prison.